Hi everyone, today we will be looking at how to easily program parking lot control with PLC Simulator. Programming a simple parking lot control is quickly done with the Productivity PLC Simulator. This is a comprehensive software suite developed to simulate and control the PLC's creation, management, and operation without the hardware. It accurately represents the complete PLC hardware from inputs, outputs, and logic control. The intuitive software enables you to understand, develop, debug, and monitor the entire system in a safe environment. This allows you to start testing before your actual imp implementation. This tutorial will guide beginners or experienced PLC programmers on how to use the robust PLC programming software. We will be programming a simple parking lot counter with a full parking lot sign output. Let's get started. Detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. The link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you with video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. We will be using the Productivity Suite PLC Simulator to control the following parking lot with 6 parking locations. Cars will enter the parking lot and be counted. So as this red car enters, the vehicle count will increment by the value of 1. When the car leaves the parking lot, the vehicle count will decrement by 1. After the vehicle count is 6, the output will be turned on, indicating the parking lot is full. We will be using the Productivity Suite, and it's a user-friendly programming software designed to quickly and easily program ladder logic programs for the Productivity 1000, 2000, and 3000 CPUs. The software includes a simulator that mimics any of the PLC controllers. This controller family will surely impress with its tag-based addressing and extensive instruction set. The online help files provides information to you to quickly get acquainted with the software. You can download your free fully functional Proactivity Suite software package with the link below. The operating system required is a Windows 11 or 10. With hardware, you need a processor of 2.6 GHz, multi-core is recommended, and memory of 4 GHz or 8 GB is recommended. You also need a storage of 2 GB. There are no video requirements and you have to have a USB or Ethernet connection in order to transfer the project to the CPU. Define the PLC inputs and outputs. Start the Productivity Suite PLC programming software. Select New Project under the file on the main menu. You can also select the New Project icon on the main menu. The Choose CPU window will now be displayed. Clicking on the arrow beside the CPU will list all of the available CPUs. Select the P3-550E Productivity 3000. That's a P3000 PLC. The base chassis will now be shown. Select the P303 base. This will contain three slots to place input and output cards. Select the Go to Hardware Configuration button. This will now display the hardware configuration window. This shows the local base group and all remote stations. In our application, we will be only using the base group. Double click on the local base PLC. We can now add our inputs and outputs to the PLC rack. Add a P3-16TR by locating it under the discrete outputs in the hardware configuration. Click and drag this to the first slot on the CPU rack. We will use the default tags for this card. Select OK. Select the P3-16SIM or simulation discrete input card. Click and drag this into slot 2 of the CPU rack. We will once again use the default tags for this card. Select OK. Our hardware configuration is now set. The parking lot example will use the first input in slot 2 to add cars and the second input to subtract cars. The third input will reset the total vehicle count. Our parking lot full output will be the first output on slot 1. Click on the X in the upper right hand side of the window to close the hardware configuration. Develop the PLC program. Our parking lot example is a counter. The entrance input is for incrementing the counter and the exit is for decrementing the counter. When the counter reaches the maximum value of 6, 
the output will indicate that the parking lot is full. With the cursor on the rung 1, double click on the counter CNT instruction. You can also click and drag the instruction onto the laddered rung area. Our output will be placed on the greater than the preset value. This is address D0-01.1.1.1. Since we are using the greater than, our preset value will be set to a maximum value of 5. The outputs will be selected for one shot. This means that the input will count when a transition from off to on occurs. We will use a tag called vehicle count for the current value of this counter. Select OK. The vehicle count tag will now be defined. We will select this as a retentive so that this value is remembered when the power is removed and then restored to the PLC. Select OK. Our counter has now been put on wrong one. There are three inputs to our counter. Position the cursor on the first input to the counter. Double click on the normally open contact or click and drag this into the position for the counter input. Enter the address for the first input in slot 2. Select OK. Do the same for the second and third inputs to the counter using the following two inputs. Select the save. Give the program a name and select save. Our program is now complete. Test and modify the PLC program. Select simulator from the main menu under CPU. You can also use the icon on the main menu. A warning message will be displayed. We will need to transfer the project to the CPU. The simulator will be treated as a separate identity, just like a physical PLC. Select OK. Transfer the program to the PLC by selecting the icon on the main menu. You can also do this by selecting the main menu, file, transfer project to CPU. Shift plus F9 will also transfer the program to the CPU. Our program will now be transferred you'll be notified that retentive tags cannot be retrieved from the CPU. Keep the current retentive tag values and select yes. The status of the project and communication is available at the bottom of the Productivity Suite programming software window. Select the monitor icon on the new task window. Our counter values along with the inputs can now be seen. Select the data view under the monitor and debug heading in the applications tools. You can also use the shortcut of control plus shift plus F3 or on the main menu under tools, select data view. The data view window will default to showing you tag and IO view. The IO view on the right will show the picture of the CPU and the inputs and outputs status. Right-clicking on the rung and selecting Monitor in Data View. Select Append to the existing tab. Since we only have one, Data View 1 will be selected. Select OK. The selected rung tags will now appear on the Tag View list. Select Run on the main menu to start this PLC simulator scanning the logic. You can see the ladder logic function and the tag views update as you click on the inputs in the IO view window. This will allow you to test the program. We can see that if we go above six on our counter and below zero, the program will allow this. Let's modify the logic so that the count cannot go higher than six or more than zero. We add an output contact for the counter up input. If the output is on, the counter will not increment. And a comparison is added to the count down input. Decrement input will not work if the vehicle count is greater than or equal to one. If the count is below one, the increment, the input to decrement is disabled.
Save the program. You will see that the CPU project status is out of date. This means that we must transfer the project again to the CPU. This time we will do this online. The program will still be ex executing and adding the modifications. The PLC will not be put into program or stop mode. Select the project transfer. Select runtime transfer. Our modified program is now running. Test again to see if the program is working correctly. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.